So you keep at it. That was a good story. Thank you very much. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Well, it's wonderful to be with you guys. I hear you got, you got a like a pizza party. Yeah. Yes. So, yep. Very cool. That's after. Yep. We have everybody That's gathered good. around here, and they planned um, twelve questions for sure. They brainstormed sure. a lot of questions, but they planned twelve for sure. If we can get it in during the time. And then yeah. after that, we're going to open it up to anyone, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Yeah, fire away. So, so let's, let's jump right into it. They're really hoping at the end if they could get a picture next to you, like next to the screen, if they could pull out their phones, which they have silent in their pockets right now. And Absolutely. Do a, an all at one time selfie. Of course. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Thank you. Well, so our contest winner, winner Andrea, is going to start the questions off. So. All right, Andrea. Okay. okay. First question. You've been writing for a while now. So... Um. Uh, what's like the most the thing that's influenced you more like a compliment or a critique that's really stood out to you? That's a great question. You know, I, it's really hard uh, to uh, To hear a question that I've never heard before and I don't think anybody's ever asked me that before um, Let me think uh, I think one one critique that really, really stuck with me was when I was in seventh grade, uh, and I thought I'd written this really, really great essay. I was so proud of it, and I turned it in, and I loved my teacher, and she gave me a C, and I was devastated. I was like, ah, because she said, okay, Rick, you're a good writer, but you didn't use any examples. I mean, you just said all this stuff, but you didn't prove it, and you know, I didn't like it at the time, but that always stayed with me, that I always have to prove things, so I, I kind of now, looking back on it, I know that she... You know, she really was looking out for me. She wanted me to be a better writer. So that was probably the most powerful one. Okay, also, uh, this one comes from the fandom, the Instagram fandom. Are you ever? Are we ever going to hear Octavian's backstory? That would be interesting. Um, you'll, you'll get a little bit of that. There's a new series coming out called The Trials of Apollo. Uh, and that comes out in May, the first one. Uh, that'll be five books. And, and it kind of takes you back into Percy's world. So if you follow the series, I don't want to spoil it, you know, if, if anybody hasn't read all those books, but you'll see what's happening to all the characters, and you'll get a little bit of that. You'll, you'll find out, like, what was Octavian's deal and who was helping him. Uh, so, yeah, you'll find out a little bit about that. Thank you very much. Yeah, you bet. Oh, we have a bearded question. All right. <laughs> um, I'm Evan. And hey, Evan. Earlier you said you get questions a lot, and this is probably the most common one. Of all the books and series that you've written, what's your favorite and why? Yeah, um, it's difficult really. I mean, it's usually the one that I just finished because like, it's the one that's the freshest in my mind. Um, I mean, like right now, if you ask me, I'd probably say uh, The Hidden Oracle, the, the new one about Apollo. Because uh, I've never really written about a god before, like first person. He's telling the story, and that was really interesting. I, I, I wasn't quite sure how that was going to go, but he's hysterical. I, I love writing from Apollo's point of view. But, I mean, if you ask me next year, I'll probably tell you something different, because I'll be on a different project. I like them all for different reasons. Thank you. Yeah. Got a nice library there. Oh, hey. Hi, I'm Michael. Um, hey, Michael. I was wondering... What you think of the movies that Pete Babbitt made out of your books? Yeah, it's it's a good question. It's Hollywood is, is kind of weird. Um, yeah. I didn't know anything about Hollywood until I wrote those books, uh, and I learned a lot. Like when I when I first sold them, this was like ten years ago. 
And I had written this book, and I was a middle school teacher. I, I taught sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, I didn't know anything about movies. Uh, but I wrote this book, The Lightning Thief, and I, suddenly my agent was like getting all these calls like from Nickelodeon and Fox, and they're saying, oh yeah, we want to buy the movie rights. Uh, I didn't know anything about that. And I said, like, well, do I get to control like how it comes out? And they kind of laughed at me and said, oh no, you don't get to control anything. You know, we make the movies. Uh, you know, but we'll listen to you. So I, I got into the process. This is a really long answer, sorry. But I got into the process and I visited the studio and I talked to them and I read the scripts. And they did some pretty weird things with the story. I mean, in my opinion, it's like, why, why are you changing that? You know, oh, well, it's because of this reason or that reason. And, and the, the longer I talked to them, the more I realized that they really were going to do something that was very, very different. I, I got to visit the set one time, uh, and it was interesting, but I, I, I kind of figured out, you know what, this really isn't going to be very much like the books. So I decided it was probably best at that point if I just kind of stayed away from it. And so to tell you the truth, I've never seen either movie. Never seen it. Because I just got the feeling that it's, it would make me uncomfortable. It, it's, it, they're so different that I probably wouldn't be able to sit there and enjoy them. So I can't answer your question, really, uh, except to say that, you know, hey, I, I, I try to write the books and make them the best I can, but Hollywood, that's completely beyond my control. Uh, so I don't know. What did you think of it? <laughs> I've heard that a lot. Yeah, that, was not that good of a movie. Of yeah, book. yeah, I've heard that a lot from people. That kind of made me glad that I decided just not to see them. Uh, but I think that's a lot of the times that's the case. You know, if you read the book, I've never seen anybody come out of the theater and say, "Wow, the movie was so much better." You know, I just, I guess it happens from time to time, but it's not real, not real common. Uh, thanks for the question, though, Michael. Some questions, you guys. I oh, my boy, Sir, you kind of jumped up with the beard and the horns. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? What's your name? Jack. Hey, Jack. So I was wondering, like, where do you like to do your writing, and where do you get your ideas from? What was the first part? Where do I do, where do my you writing? Like to, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I can write pretty much anywhere. Um, where I am right now, I'm at, I'm at home. Uh, this is my. Let me see what I can show you. This is my office in Boston. So there's my bookshelves, big travel poster of Greece, more books. Uh, so this is where I write most of the time. Uh, this is where it happens. And I write on the laptop that I'm Skyping you from. Um, you know, and I write a little bit in the morning usually, a little bit in the afternoon. It really depends. But I can take my, my laptop anywhere. So I can write wherever I am. Uh, and in terms of ideas, uh, you know, for me, it's kind of easy because I write about mostly mythology. So I just kind of take the old stories and I sort of figure out, okay, where are they going to happen if they're in modern day America? Uh, and I just start playing around with that idea and I, I make like an outline saying, okay, Percy's going to be this monster in Chicago and this monster in Denver and this monster in LA. And I kind of make up the plot like that. And so far, I haven't run out of ideas. All right, thank you. Bed. Hi. Hey, what's your name? Uh, my name is Jonah. Hey, Jonah. And so, um, how long does it usually take you to write one book? Oh, uh, a little bit longer than I have usually. <laughs> it's it's always too long. Uh, I can I can write a book in about six months if I really really rush, uh, and that's what I'm doing now. If it, most of the time it takes me about a year, uh, but. Kind of what I do is I spend like about a month sort of planning the ideas and researching and reading the myths and then making an outline. And then I'll sit down and I'll write the entire first draft. And that takes, I'm doing that right now with the second Magnus Chase book. And it takes about two and a half months. And then whatever time I have left, two months, three months, whatever it is, uh, I'll, I'll use it to revise. I just go over it again and again and again. I found out that revising, I, do you guys have to do that with your papers? Yeah. yeah. yeah is it pretty much of a drag? Yeah. Hey. Uh, yeah, for me too. I, I hate it. But, you know, I've learned that there's no way around it. It's just, you have to. There's no way to write anything perfect the first time. 
it can't be done. I, you know, I'm on my 25th novel, and I still can't do a perfect first draft. Um, but you, you write it down the first time, get it all down, and then you go back and revise and revise and revise, and that's really the only way to get it, get it done right. When I was your age, I used to write stuff, and I'd get like halfway through, and then I'd give up, and I'd say, oh, this is hard. I'll start something else. Have, 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 has that happened to any of you guys? Yeah. You get like halfway yeah. through the story? Yeah, I, and I learned there are two tricks to that. One is make an outline before you start, so you kind of know what, everything that's going to happen. And the second is don't stop. Just keep on going, even if you think it's awful. Uh, every first draft I write, I think it's absolutely terrible. And, and that's because it is. But then I go back after it's all done, and I revise it. Thanks. All right, thanks, Joe. Hi, I'm Hello. Molly. What, what's your name? Um, Molly. Molly, great. Have you ever experienced writer's block, and how do you deal with it when you do get it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of what I was saying with Jonah. I mean, the thing that helps me the most is if I have an idea of where I'm going. Like, um, I used to make like a, like a sort of a flow chart. So like every square would be a chapter in the book. And it would change, and I would always you know, deviate from it, but at least I, I kind of had a roadmap. I, I sort of knew where I was going to go. And that helps so I don't get to like chapter three and I'm, I'm out of ideas. I just look at the roadmap and I write it down. That's one thing that helps. The other thing is, um, you know, I'm like Percy, I'm really ADHD. You know, I get bored very easily. So I've learned that I can't just like sit at my desk from eight to five every day and write. I have to let myself get up, go play with the dog, you know, do the laundry, get a snack, whatever. Uh, but I write in like sort of short bursts. I like write, I sit down and write like 20 minutes, I get up, do something else, come back to it. And for me, that, that helps with the writer's block. Um, now you may be different, every writer is different. Uh, but the thing is to find the time of the day and the way that you write the best. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Hello. Hello, I'm Caitlin. Hey, Caitlin. Uh, I was wondering, have you ever written a book that you love that has not been able to get published? Thankfully, no. Thankfully, no. The only things I wrote that weren't published were when I was really young, and I, I really didn't kind of know what I wanted to write about yet. So I did a whole bunch of uh, stuff that. Today, I guess you'd call it fan fiction. I mean, it all sounded like the Lord of the Rings, which is what my favorite series was. Um, and none of that stuff ever got published. But now I, I understand that that's OK. That I, I kind of needed to write that stuff for practice, but it wasn't really good enough to get published. The first book I wrote was like an adult mystery novel. Um, and that, that actually was the first thing I wrote. It was novel length, and it, it actually got published. So I've been really lucky. I do have a lot of friends that tell me they wrote like three or four novels, and they never got published, and they just buried them in the backyard. And fortunately for me, I didn't. Okay, thank you. You bet. You bet. Yeah, these are great questions, you guys. Hey. Hi. Um, I was wondering, you've written about Greek, Roman, and Egyptian mythologies. What's your right. favorite of the three? Oh, man. What, what's your name? Logan. Logan. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess Greek is probably my favorite, um, just because the gods are just so wild, uh, and there, there's so many bizarre stories about them. Um, but I like them all. Uh, the first mythology I ever read was when I was in eighth grade, and we did a unit on the Norse gods, uh, Thor and Loki and all of those guys. So that was kind of my first gateway into mythology, and I really love those. But uh, there's, there's so much out there about the Greeks. Uh, I mean, every mythology is really cool. Um, so I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll just try to keep writing about them until I, I, uh, I run out of mythologies or I die, one of the two. Hopefully, <laughs> Hopefully I'll live a long time. Okay, thanks. You bet. Hello. Hi. My name is Marcella. Hey, Marcella. Uh, I was wondering which of your books took you the longest to write and how long did it take? Uh, gosh, um, you know, the, the funny thing is once I got the first book finished, uh, 
I was on contract. Basically, what the publisher does is they don't just want one book. They want you to sign a deal for like a series. So I had to produce them all in one year. So really, no book that I've written has taken me longer than a year because that's all the time I had. Um, deadlines are great. I mean, I don't like them, but they keep me writing. And I, I think I write better under pressure. I don't know if you guys feel that way, but you know, when I know like I have to have the book done, uh, I'm, I'm more likely to be on point and really write it. So one year. I mean, if they gave me three years, I'd probably take three years. You know, so it's a good thing. there's a few things. Uh, I mentioned that in eighth grade we did a unit on Norse myths. Uh, my teacher that year, she was really, really great. And I'm sure you guys know that, you know, a good teacher really makes the difference. I mean, it, it, it's the difference between the class being exciting and the class being boring, right? And so, you know, if you have a good teacher for math, you know, ta-da, suddenly math is your favorite subject, right? Uh, and I was that way with English in, in eighth grade. Uh, that was my favorite subject, and she was awesome. And she really got me into mythology. Uh, but I, I read stories with my dad, too, when I was really young. He used to read me folk tales, and I love those. Uh, and comic books. Man, I was really into comic books when I was young. And mythology is all over that. I mean, especially Thor, obviously. But uh, there's you know, Superman, Spider-Man. You see all these mythological, uh, mythological characters coming in in all the comic books, too. Yeah. Thank you. You bet. Hi, my name is Andrew. Hey. I, I was wondering uh, how much control you have over your books and titles. Your and the books and titles, uh, it's really interesting. I mean, even with books, I think most people are kind of surprised how little control the author has. Uh, my editor is pretty good about asking me, and she'll say, okay, here's what we're thinking for the cover, for instance. Do you like it or not? Do you have any suggestions? Uh, the, the title, usually I come up with the title, and as long as they're okay with it, then I get to keep the title. But if they think there's a problem with the title, like it sounds too much like another book, or they don't think it'll sell well, or whatever, then yeah, the publisher could decide to veto me and say, no, we're gonna change it. Uh, and I've seen some covers like from other countries too. I didn't even see them until the book was out. And sometimes they're fantastic, and sometimes they're really not. <laughs> sometimes they're, they're pretty bad. Um, but yeah, I don't have much control over, over that. The title, yes, but everything else, not really. Okay, thank you. You bet. Hey, that was our last scripted question. Anybody have other questions to ask? Go ahead, line it up. There's on that circle. So have you taken it? Stand up, Ooh, go for it. Line up okay. Hey. So, so, Evan, right? Yeah, all right, cool. So, I was also wondering if you've like, written any books that have been illustrated or if you've illustrated any books. The, uh, the only ones I've had that are kind of like, well, I guess there's two things. Um, a lot of the books have been turned into graphic novels. Um, so there's like graphic novel versions of The Lightning Thief, uh, The Kane Chronicles. There's going to be one for Magnus Chase. So, I mean, that's obviously illustrated. And what they do there is they hire somebody to kind of cut down the, the text and fit it into like the dialogue boxes. And they hire an artist, obviously, to do the art. I'm terrible at art. I mean, if I tried to illustrate it, it would just all be stick figures. Um, and the other ones that were illustrated, um, were the Percy Jackson's Greek gods and the Greek heroes. I don't know if you guys have seen those, but they're like really huge. And they've got these massive colored illustrations inside. Uh, John Rocco is the guy who did those, and he illustrated all my books. He's really amazing. So yeah, I wish I could I wish I could do art as well as write, but I don't have any talent for that. Oh, I, was, I was wondering going to write any books about a different mythology other than the three that you've already done? 
Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I haven't really planned that far. I've got I've got Magnus Chase that's about the Vikings, and I've got the Apollo series. What mythology would, would you like to see? Do you have one in mind? Um, like Indian Chinese or the Indian. Ah, okay, Indian or Chinese. The A-heads. Yeah, yeah. There's some really great stories. I used to teach uh, the Ramayana, the old uh, Indian epic. Uh, man, that's got some amazing monsters and gods in it. Uh, and Chinese mythology is really cool too. So yeah, I don't know. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Sam. Hey, Sam. I was wondering if you, um, I forgot. I'll take your time. Um, oh, I was wondering, if you weren't a writer or a teacher, what yeah. career would you pursue? <laughs> I thought for a while that I wanted to be like a rock and roll star. I played guitar. <laughs> that's, that's what I did in college. Um, and, but uh, yeah, I wasn't really all that good at it. So I'm kind of glad I didn't do that. I mean, if I wasn't writing, I'd be back in the classroom teaching, you know, you guys, teaching sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. Uh, I love middle school. I, I taught middle school for 15 years, uh, and, you know, we'd, we'd go back in a second. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so I think those are the two things that I really feel like, like I can do well. I hope, anyway. Thank you. Yeah. Andrea. Hi. Hey. Um, I have a curiosity. How much of the things on Instagram and Tumblr do you see? Because some interesting things <laughs> I'm sure there are. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have social media accounts, as you obviously know. I mean, I've got uh, Instagram, I've got Tumblr, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on all of this. Um, I don't tend to look at the comments. I, I just sort of post stuff and let people, you know, do whatever. Um, because it could sort of, if I, if I got into that, it could just sort of suck me in and I would never get out of it again. There's so many comments, I'm sure you know. Um, so what happens usually is my wife, Becky, she kind of uh, looks through that for me. And so she'll say, well, you know, here's one that you might want to know about. This is really nice. You know, this particular person wrote this, and it's a nice story, or whatever. Or definitely don't read that one. You know, that's, that's weird, you know. Um, so she'll, she'll sort of keep track of that for me. Uh, so I just see a little bit. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Nolan. Hey, Nolan. Um, my question is, uh, what age did you start to develop a, such a passion for writing? It, you know, it was really all around middle school again, and I, I don't think that's any coincidence, you know, that I later became a middle school teacher, because that's when it all kind of fired up for me. I got interested in mythology, I had a, some great English teachers, and that's also when I started writing. Uh, my first story that I wrote, uh, I, I still have it. It's, it's pretty bad, but uh, my teacher read it and said, yeah, you know, you should send this in and try to get it published. And I got my first rejection note, uh, and my mom still has it. It's hanging in her house. I have to look at it every time I go visit her. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's something I've been trying ever since then. And that's the main thing. You know, if you want to be a writer, there's really three things you got to do. You got to read a lot so you know what you're doing. You got to write because writing is a sport it's practice it's what makes it happen and the third thing is don't give up it took me what 27 years until i finally got published but i kept at it okay, thank you you got no one hi hi i'm autumn and hey, autumn. my question is i'm i think that when i write stories sometimes i use people from my real life to make characters off of yeah. Do you ever do that? Yeah, do, do people ever recognize themselves in things that you write? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does that ever get you in trouble? Uh, sometimes I just ask them. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I do. I'll, I'll confess, I, I sometimes use real people. When I wrote The Lightning Thief, I based it kind of on the school where I was teaching at the time. And so a lot of the kids were named after my students like Charles Beckendorf, Travis and Connor Stoll, Miko, all of those names are names of former students of mine. And Mrs. Dodds, uh, if you've read The Lightning Thief, she's the one that turns into the monster and tries to kill Percy. Uh, she's based on Mrs. Dodds, who was a real math teacher at the school. And after the book came out, I, I kind of had to say, oh yeah, I forgot to change the name. Sorry, Mrs. Dodds, I turned you into a monster and killed you. <laughs> 
But it's, it's cool with her though, because now all her kids, uh, her students think she's a monster, so you know they're really nice to her. Hey. Um, what was your, what should your favorite guy to play with? Oh man, um, so many. I, I think it changes every day. Uh, do you have, do you have a favorite? Um, it's kind of hard to choose. Yeah, I would I would say that too. I mean, obviously, um, I like Poseidon because he has a really big part in the books, and I like the idea of the god of the sea. You know, like he can be really nice and really calm, like the ocean, or he can be really angry and really violent. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was kind of interesting. He's kind of my favorite, and not my favorite, because he's, he's not my favorite because. I'm yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> I like him because the creatures in the sea are really cool. So, uh huh. Yeah. So, thank yeah, you. Yeah. 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 You bet. Um. Like. Hey, like. I was wondering if you have ever seen like any books that seem to be based on off your ideas. If so, how do you feel about that? Um. I mean, occasionally. Um. I mean, occasionally. Occasionally, I'll run across something like that, uh, and you know, and usually it's not—it's not a big deal. I mean, as long as you know they're not naming the character Percy Jackson and it's like exactly copied. I mean, that's fine. I mean, Greek mythology is really old, and people have been writing about it for centuries. So you know, if there's other books about Greek mythology, hey, that's great. You know, because because their book is not going to be the same as my book, and that's fine. Um, the other interesting thing is you can't copyright ideas. I mean, you can't you you can't own an idea. The only thing you can own is how you tell the idea. Um, so, like, if there's two books and they're both about Sons of Poseidon, I, I can't sue somebody just because of that, uh, because the way they tell it might be completely different from my way. So, yeah, it's usually fine. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. I was um, wondering. You had Jason in the Roman books. He right. came out of almost nowhere, where you had the book yeah. series about Percy. Were you going to make a yeah. book series about Jason? Maybe in his adventures? I don't know. Would you be interested in reading that? Yeah, because you mentioned in the third book of uh -huh. the Heroes of Olympus, you said that he went on a submarine adventure where he yeah. went inside the museum and got the Imperial Gold artifacts. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah, there's all kinds of other adventures that I don't talk about, um, and I don't know. I'm not sure if I'll go that route or not. Um, you know, for me, the big question is, okay, it takes half a year or a year to write a book, and so I can only write, obviously, so many books, right? So which ones do I really like the most? Um, I know already I'm not going to be able to write all the books I'd like to write. I just don't have time. I'd have to live to 500, you know? but. But which ones do I want to do the most? And that would be a cool one to do. I'm not sure if I'll get to it or not. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, hey. I'm Jesse. Hey, Jesse. Uh, is it okay if I ask two questions? Go for it. Um, one, who is your favorite author for, to, for today? Okay. Other than you. Oh, it's, man, I don't know if I can choose just one. Um, I really like Suzanne Collins, the, the author of The Hunger Games. I've been. Uh, I've known her since way before The Hunger Games when she was writing Gregor the Overlander, which is another series she writes. It's awesome. Uh, and I love her writing style. Um, uh, you know, J.K. Rowling, obviously, the Harry Potter books are great. I love them. Um, gosh, I mean, there's, there's so many. There are so many really good writers writing these days. It's kind of hard to pick. Um, I just started reading a sci-fi series, a, a young adult sci-fi series called Red Rising, which is great. Uh, it's by Pierce Brown, and it's set on Mars uh, in the near future. And it's, it's really fun. It's sort of like The Hunger Games and Divergent on Mars. <laughs> so that, that's a good one to check out. And what was your second question? How do you like our horns? <laughs> yeah, I love those. Those are so cool. I, I, you, don't, you guys don't wear that like all the time, then. Uh, it's just for the day. Uh, I believe so. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah, but those are really great. Um, okay. Great last name for Clarice. Oh, okay. Good. good. <laughs> Hello, hey. my name's Veronica. Hey, Veronica, I like your shirt. Thank you. <laughs> my sister made it. Awesome. Um, um, my question was, since, like, what is your favorite fight scene with, like, all of your books? Like, you've made tons of fight scenes in your 
I do have tons of fight scenes. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite is in The Last Olympian, where basically the whole book is just one huge fight scene. It's like they go from one place to another in Manhattan. Uh, and that was that was just really awesome fun. I kind of like the scene where the flying giant pig just like comes out of nowhere, you know, and just sort of takes them for a ride and knocks stuff around. Uh, that's probably my favorite. Yeah, that was my favorite too. <laughs> Glad you liked it. Hey. Hi, my name's Lily. So I was wondering. Since I've read so many books, I love reading and I love writing, and a lot of the characters, they seem very stereotypical, and so when something happens, they change completely, which is uh -huh. definitely unreal. So I was wondering how you create a character, well, multiple characters that are so strong that last throughout so many books that seems like real people would. That's a great question. Um, you know, I, I think one of one of the things that helps is is just practicing over and over again and reading a lot of books and seeing how different writers do it and if you're a writer and you're reading a lot of books what i find is i, I spend a lot of time looking at the book like oh, okay i like the way that she did that in chapter 14 where that character like finds this out and and you'll see different ways of doing it um pulling from real life is another way like your friends, you know, your family, people that deal with stuff, how do they do it? And try to apply that to the characters. Mostly it's just about practicing writing. I think you do get better at it the more you do it. Um, so hopefully we'll find that it gets easier over time. But keep at it, don't give up. Thank you. Uh, also, I was wondering if I could ask you a question for my friend Anna. She's home of course. School, so she didn't have a chance to do this, but she absolutely loves all of your books. And sure. she was wondering if, well, what your favorite, who your favorite character's point of view to write it Ah, yeah. Well, obviously, I'm really close to Percy's point of view. I mean, I have his sense of humor, and I've written about him the most. I like Magnus, because Magnus is a little more sarcastic, um, and he's a little more like me. Um, and Sadie Kane from the Kane Chronicles. I had never written uh, from a point of view of a 13-year-old girl before, especially a British 13-year-old girl, and she's just hilarious. I love writing from Sadie's point of view. She's a, she's a firecracker. Thank you. You bet. You bet. Oh. Hey. Hi. Have you, um, have you ever heard of or read the dance novels? And if you have, what do you think of them? What, what are the novels? Dance by Piers Anthony. The M track? The Xanth novels. Oh, Xanth. Oh, I've heard of them, but I haven't read them. Would you recommend them? Yeah. Okay, I'll check them out. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Well, great questions. You guys are a really, really sharp bunch of uh, interviewers. Good, aren't they? Yeah. Um, we only have you for a half hour. We know you're busy, probably getting ready to write your next book. Um, but the kids really did want a picture with you, if that's okay. Absolutely, this is how sure. Wants, wants to, can we gather them around the screen? Yeah, please do. Kids first, no phones, right? So just gather around the screen here, and we'll get pictures. There are lots of adults okay. here who want that photo opportunity as well. Okay. Just don't block his face, you guys. I don't. I don't have any horns to do. <laughs> <laughs> Get away from the projector. Get 